Hello everyone. Um, thank you for your interest in the seminar. My name is Pramod Sambidi. I'm with the Houston Galveston Area Council. I'm a program manager for socioeconomic modeling. Um, today um, we'll be going over the application called Activity Connectivity Explorer. Um, before I um, go into the presentation, um, the people on the webinar uh, uh, you can uh, chat in your questions anytime, and I would be able to answer them at the end of the presentation. And uh, people here um, I can uh, raise your hand, and I can answer your question right away. And uh, also, please uh, submit uh, the uh, survey at the end of the uh, seminar. Your feedback is very important for us, and it will help us make better applications and improve our uh, presentation. And uh, with that, uh, let's get in. Uh, I guess uh, most of you know uh, Houston Galveston Area Council. It's a call for 13 counties. Uh, we uh, seven people reside here, and uh, we have three million jobs. And we also serve as a metropolitan planning organization for the eight county region. My group is responsible for managing regional data, and uh, we also produce regional growth forecasts of population, employment, and land use for the eight county region. And we also develop uh, interactive tools and web mapping applications and provide technical assistance staff and uh, transportation consultants and local governments. So uh, in the first two seminars, um, some of you have attended the first two seminars. So in the first one, um, we covered Demographic Data Explorer, which was looking at uh, census uh, demographic data. And the second seminar, uh, we focused on uh, LESD data and commute patterns, which was uh, uh, regarding the employment data. And this application, the great thing with this application is uh, this is like a planning tool. Uh, it combines demographic data and employment data and helps planners make better decisions. So let's see what's in the application. So the application allows to identify existing activity centers based on density and connectivity index. We use uh, hexagonal grids um, to uh, show the population and employment and connectivity. And the density indicators we have are household population, employment, activity population, which is population plus employment. And uh, we also show jobs and housing balance. And for connectivity, uh, we are using intersections as a proxy uh, to show how uh, well the uh, areas are connected, because the more the number of intersections, the better they are connected. And uh, we also measure accessibility of uh, neighborhoods. Uh, we use uh, amenities, activity population, and intersections for that. And amenities, uh, we call them as pet bike destinations. I'll show you the list of pet bike destinations we have um, in a minute. And the, the way we calculate accessibility score is we give 40% to activity index, 20% to connectivity, and 40% to amenity index. So let me jump into the application. So this is uh, our web page where we have all the applications. And if you click on planning, you can see the Activity Connectivity Explorer. So we have two versions, advanced and summary. Um, today I'm going to show you advanced version, but I will also show you a glimpse of the summary viewer. Advanced is uh, more for uh, if, if a planner would like to uh, define his own boundaries or do customized queries, this is the best uh, tool to use. So let's click on the Activity Connectivity Explorer advanced viewer. And first, I'll go over the uh, layers that are in the application. And click OK. And let's see what we have here first. So here, what we are looking at is the activity, activity population density. So this is a combination of population plus employment at the hexagonal grid level. And each hexagonal grid is a point 
one four square miles. So if you combine seven hexagons, it will be one square mile. So let's see what the index is. Agent. So the red indicates that these um, the hexagons are or the areas have a lot of activity population. As you can see, that um, downtown Green uh, Green Greenview Plaza, uh, Texas Medical Center, Shopstown area, Energy Car. These are all um, areas where there is a lot of activity population. And you can click on uh, individual hexagonal grid, and you can see. Uh, the household for that particular hexagon, household population, jobs, activity population, number of intersections. And when you look at density, like household density or population density, so this is basically showing you the uh, total of the seven hexagons that, uh, that are including this one. So the hexagons are surrounding this particular hexagon. Uh, so it is a summary of um, those seven hexagons which make one square mile. Okay, so when you select one, the data is for? So the, uh, the data shows for individual hexagon. Mm -hmm. So the, the, this is uh, what you're seeing is for individual hexagon. Okay. But when you look at the density values, okay. it says density, density per square mile. Per square mile. So. so that's uh, the activity uh, population. And Let's look at, for example, population density. So these are, this is strictly looking at uh, population. This does not include employment. And if you zoom in, so for example, you don't see much of downtown, only south portion of downtown. And um, and you can see all these areas. This is uh, popping up because of the population density. Same thing, uh, we have the same uh, legend for for each layer. So the, the red indicates top 20 percentile in terms of uh, density. Next, we have employment density. So here, um, so if you are, for example, if you are interested in uh, looking at what are the employment centers in Houston area, and this kind of gives you a, um, like a proxy of those so for example, here we see downtown, we see Texas Medical Center, Greenway Plaza, Uptown, West Chase, Energy Corridor, Memorial City, Sugarland, Greens Point, and Outlands, for example. So these are the employment, these are the areas where there is a lot of employment density. And next, uh, let's move on to intersection density. So these are uh, based on uh, number of intersections. So this is obvious. Downtown is there's a lot of uh, there, there. It is well connected, so there are a lot of intersections. But uh, in a minute, I will show you like there are areas that have a lot of activity, but they are not well connected. So and you can also see some of the suburbs. Uh, we see a lot of um, red because you can see the underlying streets. Well, you can see there's a lot of intersections there. So that's why um, those areas are popping up as well. Next, um, we also look at uh, jobs and household balance. So for these, this is the ratio of jobs to households. And wherever you see yellow, which is 0 0.76 to 1.5, we call them as mixed use. So where these these are the areas where is a where there is a balance between jobs and households. So for example, uh, if you look at uh, downtown, it's red because there is a lot of employment and less population. But um, similarly, if you look at uh, uptown, same thing, Greenway Plaza, same thing. Uh, but there are areas where uh, there is a lot of um, jobs as well as uh, population. I will show them in a bit. So these are the uh, layers under Activity Connectivity Explorer. Um, let's see some of the other layers we have. Well, just a quick question on sure. job household balance, like where it's three plus, about, oh, never mind. I'm not more, more job. job. Yeah. Right. I just have to look at that. 
<laughs> okay, um, now let's look at pet bike destinations. So these are, so pet bike, uh, we call the, all these as pet bike destinations because um, these are based on the building information, parcel based building information. So people um, go to mall or shopping uh, retail centers to shop, uh, restaurants to eat food and hotel, office buildings, schools, uh, hospitals. So these are all where people uh, go to access uh, services. So these we call them as pet bike destinations and we use these uh, in calculating the amenity index. I'll go over that in a bit. So, and also we have these uh, metro facilities. Uh, this is coming from uh, the metro. And here we see uh, rail station, transit centers, park and ride, and uh, bus stops. So this is also a part of the amenity index. So the areas with better access to these metro facilities have uh, more score than the ones that are less. Okay, now let's go to the accessibility score. So this is a combination of, again, activity population, um, that means activity index, amenity index, and connectivity index. So these are the areas where, uh, with, uh, the, the areas that are in red are the ones that are highly accessible. So again, uh, you can see the uh, the inner loop area, and uh, you can see there are, again these are these are employment centers here, but we don't see them as red or on the on the top 20 percentile because uh, seems like the connectivity index is less for those areas, and I'll show you that in a bit. So this is uh, I'm trying to just go over the layers and then we can do some analysis. Pardon me? The question is about, uh, do we have data for the outer counties? Uh, no, we the, the data is only for the eight county region. Uh, so we collect appraisal data for the eight counties, and we do population forecast for the eight counties. That's why uh, we don't have the data for the the other five counties. Okay, um, and we already saw the activity and connectivity, and let's look at the amenity. Okay, so these are the, the areas again in the red are where um, there are a lot of amenities. Um, again, you can see uh, the area that are, have a lot of activity also have a uh, lot of amenity index. And in addition to that, we also have a forecast data at the uh, transportation analysis uh, zone level. And we have a land use current and 2045. And we also have boundaries. I'll show you the boundaries. Uh, this is coming from uh, city of Houston. They have uh, boundaries for neighborhoods and management districts and other precincts, et cetera. So let's click on the, the first search button. And what we did here was uh, we created a threshold based on the percentiles. So, and we have this for all uh, the indicators. So first I'm going to show you the activity population density. And let's look at the top 10 percentile. So what, what this does is uh, this creates a polygon out of the hexagons that are, have similar value. So instead of individual hexagon, it creates a polygon. So this uh, is something like employment centers, for example. So here, again, you can see the uh, downtown in the Montrose area, and here the 
um, Texas Medical Center, Greenway Plaza, Uptown, and Sharpstown area, Westchies, Memorial City, Energy Corridor, uh, Sugarland Town Center, Woodlands, and the Greens Point area. So this is uh, population plus jobs. But let's look at, let me clear this. Let's look at just uh, employment. So just, I, I want to look at just employment centers, not activity centers. So let's look at the top 10 percentile. And you can see there are only few popping up. Downtown, Medical Center, Greenway Plaza, and the Uptown. Not even uh, Energy Corridor or uh, Vestiges or Greens Point. Because uh, it's, we are looking at the top 10 percentile. But if we change it, let's go ahead and let me clear this again. And let's look at top 20 percentile. And now we can see uh, the other employment centers as well, so including the uh, Galveston area. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, let me clear that. And now um, let's look at the activity density. And again, I'm looking at uh, top 20 percentile. And you can see there are a lot of areas that have well connected. But now I'll show you like, there are areas where, where there's a lot of activity, but they're not well connected. To give you an example of that, I'm going back to the activity population density, and I'm going to select top 20 percentile, and okay, now going back to the layers, I'm selecting both of them. So now you can see, so the blue indicates connectivity, top 20 percentile in connectivity index, and the red indicates top 20 percentile in activity. So as you can see, for example, the downtown area is well connected and there's a lot of activity. Um, However, area like um, the, the West Chase and the Uptown and the, uh, the area on the west of the loop, there is a lot of activity, but they are not, seems like they're not well connected. That's because the streets are long, the blocks, it's, there are less, inter, uh, less number of intersections. As you can see, the street network over there, you can see they are not well connected. At, as compared to downtown area, for example. So these are the areas maybe we can focus on transportation investments to improve uh, the transportation. So this is one example. Let me clear the result. Okay, and uh, let's also look at uh, accessibility score. And now again, I'm looking at the top 20 percentile for accessibility. So again, these are the areas where there's a lot of, uh, these are areas where they are well connected. There's a lot of uh, activity and uh, accessibility is pretty good. Okay, now let me remove this. Okay, I'm closing this. And um, now I would like to show you an example of uh, doing a location analysis for a user-defined geography. So for that, I'm clicking on the, the green wheel button here. And so let's, for example, look at the uh, Greenway Plaza area. Oh, 
Okay, I'm not using any buffer here right now. So let's look at the pet bike destination, for example. So there are total 244 out of that. A lot of them are commercial and retail. Uh, around 23 office buildings, two parks, nine public and institu institutions. And let's look at metro facilities. These are the bus stops in this particular area. And uh, this is the land use information. There are around 9,600 housing units um, and uh, around 19 million square foot of uh, non-residential space or building square feet. And the same thing, uh, you can look at 2045. So by 2045, the forecast is predicting that this area will have around 14,000 housing units and uh, close to 20, 000, 20 million uh, non-residential square feet. And again, this is the forecast. So population, current population 33, 34,000 and by 2045, we see uh, around close to 40,000, and jobs-wise, 50,000, 51,000 right now, and by 2045, we see 57,000. And these are the um, the hexagonal grid information um, for 2017 data. So there are around 15,000 households, 31,000 people, 54,000 jobs, and combination of uh, Population plus employment is 85,000, and there are 290 intersections in this particular area. And so, if you would like, you can have a create a buffer around it. So, I'm creating, for example, 0.25 quarter mile buffer, and you can get the same summary for that particular area, which includes the buffer. So, um, so th this is one way. So basically, you are creating your own uh, boundary or geography uh, using a polygon or a line or a point. And now I will show you uh, how you can select, for example, a management district and get all this information right away. Yes. Is there a feature limit? Uh, yes, there is a limit. Uh, for for the land use information, there is a limit, so it cannot uh, if if it exceeds ten thousand parcels, then it won't show up. But others will do. Uh, others will show up. So parcels are very small. That's why it takes a lot of time. So there is a limit for that. So. Let me clear it. Okay, now I'm going back to the layers and I'm clicking on boundary and clicking on the arrow by the side and I'm going to select the management districts, for example. So these are the management districts, for example. Let's look at downtown. So when you click on downtown and click on the three dots here and set location. So when you click on set loco location, it will um, create this um, um, location analysis widget. And you can click on head bike destinations, for example. So there are 461, 157 commercial and retail, 62 office buildings, 20 parks and recreational, and 215 public institutions. And similarly, you can click on metro facilities like bus stops, for example. And there's one transit center and 12 LRT LR stations, light rail stations. And this is the land use information. This is the uh, forecast, and the current 2017 data, so 679 intersections, that's why. And accessibility score, 
can see that this particular downtown has a high accessibility of 92. So, and now we can uh, do a similar analysis by selecting, and here you can, so right now I'm going to Vistchase, clicking on Vistchase, and when you click on the three dots here, you can add to the current selection, or you can, uh, if you click on set location, then it will uh, select Vistchase area. So I'm going to select location. So now Vistchase is selected. And again, you can get all this information. And uh, previously, I showed you that these areas are less, uh, do not show up in terms of accessibility. That's because you can look at the connectivity index. It is very low, 28 out of 100. Although, even though there is uh, activity index is 88, the connectivity is 28, and uh, amenity is 50. So there are areas uh, kind of uh, need better transportation investments. OK, so this is one example. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to create your own boundaries, user-defined boundaries based on the query. So let's click on the, I'm going to show two ways. So the first way is uh, by clicking on this. Um, again, you can select activity population density. And previously you had predefined where thresholds. Now you can use your own threshold. So right now I would like to see instead of 90 or 80, I want, for example, I want 8.85. So, 85% or 0.85 and click on apply. So this is uh, top 15 percentile. So previously we saw top 10 and top 20. Now we can say you can do 17 or 18 or any number you want. So this is a uh, top 15 percentile. And now you can see that previously we were looking at hex of the polygons. But this is a individual uh, hexagon. So let's see how we can convert this into a polygon. Uh, click on the create boundary here. And here, uh, select the activity population. This is the result that was added to the layer and click on execute. Uh, some issue. Uh, let's see. Let me refresh and see. I'm going to do repeat the same thing. So I'm going to select activity population 0.85. If it doesn't work, then we'll skip this. Okay. Okay. Could you try another one? A different layer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm same thing. I'm looking at accessibility score. No point? Oh, yeah. yeah. 85 to 100. Okay. So let's see if it works this time. I'm using a different boundary. Uh, so there are three uh, uh, widgets that create boundaries. I'm using a different one right now. Oops. So there is some error, otherwise uh, we'll, it will create a boundary. Um, 
So let me clear that. So let me go back to that um, the one where we had the polygons. So clicking at the top 20 percentile of activity population. So uh, I missed, uh, forgot to show you this. Like if you click on the polygon, it will show you the total for that polygon. So not just the hexagon, but this one shows you the total for that polygon. So you can click on any polygon here. It will show you the uh, population, households, and jobs, and number of intersections for that particular polygon. And next thing, um, again, you can have, you can do a multiple queries. So I can go back and, uh, for example, do employment density. Not employment, maybe, uh, maybe intersection density. So the result will go away, the old one. But if you go back to the layers, you can select it again. And now, so I have uh, two layers. One is for activity. One is for uh, uh, one is for activity publishing, and the other one is for intersection density. And if you are interested in saving these layers and using it for your own analysis, you can do that as well. So what we the next step is click on the select widget here and make sure that those two layers are selected. And here you can select as a polygon or a rectangle or a circle. I'll do a circle, for example. Oops, big one. But what this does is it selected both the layers. So if you click on this, for example, intersection density, and you can save it as a GeoJSON. So you can export this as a GeoJSON file. And you can also export the activity population layer as a GeoJSON. And uh, like the one I showed in the last seminar, you can go to mapshaper.org and you can you can drag and do drop these uh, saved GeoJSON files and import them and uh, if you click on this you can see everything is saved here and all you have to do is click on export and export it as a shape file. So you can export this data as a shape file and use it in your own analysis. Same thing you can do uh, with the activity population. So like these, you can save multiple layers and use, in, uh, use it for further analysis. So let me close this. Have any questions? So far, yeah. So I'm sorry. When you're trying to export the features by selecting it, how do you make sure you select the particular layers you're trying to? Okay. Uh, so the the to to do a selection. So this is the question is about how do you uh, uh, select a layer, and what are the steps that are needed to select a layer. So the first thing is under the layers, the main layers list, you need to have both the layers selected, whatever you want to make selection on. So if you want to make selection on, for example, bikeways, you need to have that selected. And once you have that selected, go to the selections tool, and you see that those are the only two layers that are selected here. So then you can click on the down arrow here and you can select it by in various ways. And that way you will have the, whatever you have selected, those layers will be selected. 
So here we have two layers selected. So you got it? Okay, um, so that's uh, with the saving the data. Uh, again, um, the data is also available for download in a spreadsheet format. So, for example, if you click on, for example, in the intersection density, uh, the dots next to the intersection density, click on view attribute table, and that will uh, provide you the uh, data in table format, and you can click on options, and you can export the data as a CSV. Here, uh, I'm doing it for polygons, but you can do the same thing for the hexagons. Can you export the information from the location analysis? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I can. So let's, we can export the data uh, from location analysis as well. That was the question. Um, let me show you, for example, the boundary. So using the management district, for example. So if you want downtown data. <laughs> Sometimes you need to refresh. I don't know why, but yeah, you have to do that. So let me select the management districts. Okay, something wrong with the... So this is coming from city of Houston, so maybe their server is down, I don't know. But let's do uh, a quick location analysis. So doing a point selection, giving a two mile buffer. Two miles seems to be too big. Let's give me one mile buffer. Okay, now head back destinations. If you click on this cloud here, you can download the data. So it's basically downloaded the data. So if you want hexagonal grids data, download it. So it has all the hexagons in that region with household population, activity population, everything, index. Is there a way to then convert that from the CSV into a shape file? Um, the the shape file that that's the way that's the only way uh, okay. I show you how you how you can convert. Otherwise, um, if you are for example using a um, a transportation analysis zone, you may have already have a layer of transportation analysis. For that case, uh, you don't need a shape file. You can just use a spreadsheet. No. The parcels uh, for parcels uh, we have. Let me see. I think we can have the land use information here. So we don't have like other uh, layers, but you can always combine them. I mean, in the GI inside GIS. So this is parcel ID, so parcel ID, and uh, and if you want more, you can go to the uh, regional land use information system application, the forecast application. So so this is uh, location analysis. Um, one final thing. Um, so, so this is there is an enhanced query option. So you can, if you're interested to do multiple queries, you can do it right here. So 
I'm selecting hexagon and I'm looking at, for example, activity index greater than 80. Add to the query. So, and run it. So this will show you all the hexagons that have uh, activity index of greater than 80. And you can add to this query. And I also want to look at and, for example, amenity index greater than 80. Now, uh, let's clear the previous one and run it again. So these uh, are the hexagons where activity index is greater than 80 and amenity index is greater than 80. Likewise, you can add multiple queries and or uh, uh, similar to the SQL queries. So this is uh, one other option to doing a query. Let me clear the map. And um, we also have, uh, if you're still not clear on how to use the application, we have a user guide uh, right here. And we are also going to save this, uh, have this webinar posted on the website if you want to take a look at it again. And with that, I'll show you the summary. You were, there are a few things that are quite interesting. And this one does a historic comparison. So we have data from 2000 to 2017. And here, uh, is, we cannot do uh, like a user defined query. These are all pre-selected. So similar to the uh, the polygons that you saw, these are, we have uh, percentiles here. So let's look at, for example, employment density. So for this is uh, from 2002 to 2017. So I'm looking at uh, 15,000 plus. So overall in the region, we only have three popping up. Again, this is 2002 data. So like 16 years back. So we have downtown, medical center, Greenway and Uptown. Those are the only employment centers. I mean, Greens Point as well. Those are the only employment centers popping up. Let's see in 2017 how things have changed. Apply. Now we can see um, the new ones popping up like Vestiges, Energy Corridor, Memorial City Mall. And you also see uh, expansion of uh, some of the existing employment centers, I mean, the existing employment centers. And you can also see woodlands popping up. And Sugarland, for example. So as you can see, the Houston is growing in terms of population and jobs. And there are new activity centers that are being popping up and existing activity centers are expanding. So you can do a similar thing with population and uh, intersection density as well. So this is 2002, 2000 data. And this is uh, 2017. As you can see, new things popping up. So, any questions? Okay. Okay. Let's uh, want to show one final thing I missed, which is the jobs household ratio that I talked about. So these are the areas that are, which have a balance between jobs and households. And this we can call them as mixed use neighborhoods. 
and um, again um, because downtown is mostly employment that's why we don't see it but there are areas surrounding downtown that are kind of mixed used and there are areas in the suburbs that are also mixed use so that's all I have let me know if you have any questions um, and again thank you all for coming